Oh, oh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Come on, oh, oh, whoa, who? Tell you, Casper is a crazy one. Come on, little monkey. Come on, oh. Hope the start of your day is amazing. I know I'm starting my day with a little adrenaline. That's right, we're gonna be feeding some animals today, but then later on, we're actually going to a cool place. It's gonna be, it's it's gonna be completely ridiculous, guys. It's called the Death Museum. That's right, so let's go ahead and feed some snakes like Casper. Uh, hopefully it won't be quite as crazy as that one. Push our problems aside and have a great time feeding snakes and then taking you on this crazy macabre journey. You guys know that I love feeding snakes. Al is my number two victim here. Come on, buddy. This way, this way, this way, this way. Whoa, there you go, buddy. Oh my gosh, such a beautiful snake. And you guys know that Al is kind of one of the, you know, the most popular snakes, especially on 2.0 side. I mean, he's probably the animal that comes out more than any other animal. And it's just always impressive to have a, a really docile reticulated python. Cause you know, a lot of retics are kind of fast moving. And of course we're working on Sunfire and a couple other snakes to try to calm them down. But Al and Perdita are my two retics that are just super good for handling. So Al's definitely super popular. And speaking of Sunfire, it looks like she is ready to go. Oh, come on, little girl. Come on, over here, over here, over here. Right here. Whoop, 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 whoop. There you go. Oh, she took it perfect. What a beautiful snake. And remember last week, we actually fed these guys smaller meals. Remember how I say I cycle things through? So today they're getting slightly larger meals again, back to that way to go. The only one I'm not gonna feed today is Ivy because obviously she's still, you know, I'm still kind of waiting on her. She's looking really good, no problems. I can't see any bubbles. She hasn't had any mouth gaping since we've raised that temperature and all that stuff seems to be good. But I'm gonna give her one more week. I'm gonna probably feed Aries today, but Ivy, I'll give her one more week and then I'll give her a small meal like this too, just to kind of keep things going. But, uh, but so far, Ivy is doing good. I can't believe Mumu is getting so absolutely big. I remember when she came in and she was just kind of this yellowish snake, had one little dot on her face and that was it. Look, look, what did you do, you silly monkey, you? And now she's starting to get spots like Perdita, getting big. She's almost the same size as Perdita. I mean, within six months, she's gonna definitely get there. But if you remember correctly, when I got her, I literally reached in the back because cowrie ticks are usually really tame and she lit me up. And probably for the first month we had Moo Moo, she was, she was crazy. I mean, she couldn't even touch her without her biting her. Now she's absolutely mellow and super good. Again, not like pretty in the sense that she just sits around. She moves a whole lot, but she definitely isn't an aggressive snake. Never tries to bite. Certainly a beautiful animal. Literally just feeding Moo Moo down here and Tiana came like right up to the front, was like kind of scratching like, Dad, come over and pet me. This animal has come such a long way since we've had it. I mean, not that it was horrible before, but it was definitely afraid of people. And now literally it's getting almost like Bella where it's like begging for attention you know it's like you better come over here and pet me she is uh, she's absolutely wonderful and she will come out too it's kind of nice unlike Bella she'll jump right on your shoulder and you can walk around with her so she's absolutely amazing Jeffrey you're about to get fed but not my hand not my hand not my hand there you go buddy there you go, perfect hit. And of course, for you guys that don't know, we named him Jeffrey after Jeffrey the giraffe, right? Just because we thought he kind of had a giraffe pattern. And did you know that scientists just discovered a corgi type giraffe? That's right, a giraffe with tiny legs that's in Africa. It seems to be like a mutation, like a corgi dog, but in a giraffe. So you can imagine instead of having this giant giraffe, you've got a giraffe with little tiny legs. I tell you what, now I think I can actually have one in my backyard. You think Aries knows that food's about to happen? You know, again, these animals can start to smell. It's like scenting the room. I've always even talked about the fact that a lot of times when you're feeding your snakes, if you thaw the food out and leave them out for maybe a half hour beforehand, the scent of the rodents get in the room and it really turns them on to wanting to feed. And Aries is definitely ready to go. So let's see what we can do. Of course, we're not going to feed Ivy like I mentioned. So I'm going to have to feed him and then pull him out of the enclosure. So let's see what we got going on. Aries, come on, buddy. Come on, over here. Aries. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> I tell you what, what a crazy monkey this guy is. So I'm just gonna literally pull him out of the enclosure, put him into a holding cage, just so that Ivy doesn't come over and try to steal his food. Cause like I mentioned, I don't want Ivy to eat this week. I wanna give her one more week off. Come on, buddy. There you go. Ah, there you go, bud. There it is, good job, buddy. And that should be a nice meal for Aries. Again, Ivy should be good. We'll give her this week off. Like I said, she's acting really good. You can see her over here. You know, she's not gaping. As a matter of fact, she looks like she's interested in food too. So I think she's doing really well. So that's a good sign. You know, Night Fury's up, guys. Uh, oh, he's an adventure with this little monkey here. So, whoa, hey, hey, hey. The glass is not something you eat. Whoa. Hey, over here, over here. This is the blue ball. This is the blue ball. Over here. Come on, this way, 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 this way. There you go. <laughs> the thing is absolutely out of its mind, but I love them. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that animal is absolutely adorable. And you guys know that one of the highlights of my week are feeding all these animals. I mean, because that just tells me that they're happy. Whoa! Whoa, that's okay. Whew. Perdita came out. She was definitely excited. Again, that last week's small meals really turned these guys into monsters this week because they didn't get that big meal last week. So, but that's what you want, right? That type of thing. But feeding snakes is, uh, it's awesome, you know, and I never get sick of it and it's so cool. And again, I use it as a kind of a, a measuring stick to tell me how they're doing. Are they stressed out? Are they feeling good? Is the temperatures right? All those types of things. Feeding is important. If your snake is feeding, typically it means it's healthy or at least close to healthy. So you got to keep an eye on everything. But feeding is a certain a barometer to how good your snake is doing. I think Cupcake is probably the fastest striking snake that I have. When it decides it wants to eat, it is absolutely, it'll just go, go, go. And when it strikes, I mean, you can't even react. There's no way you would have a reaction time to pull away from that snake. It is lightning quick, and she definitely fired up on that one. So we'll give her a few rats today just to keep that beefy boa getting even bigger. Super excited today, guys, because we came in this morning and we caught pickles and gherkin over here locked up for the very first time. So we're gonna go ahead and feed her now that she's unlocked and see what she wants to do. Come on, buddy, come on. There she goes, nice. Again, you want them to get food right after they breed in particular because she's probably growing follicles right now. So putting a little bit of beef on her is gonna really help out to potentially go to an ovulation and potentially have babies. Can you imagine if Pickles has eggs? How absolutely incredible would that be? So today was the first breeding. Hopefully they'll continue to do it and maybe here this spring slash summer, we might have some baby green tree pythons. We're not just feeding rats today, we're actually feeding a sloth too. And of course, Jay is just over here doing a little training session with Drogo because uh, pretty soon we're gonna be able to actually do some interactions and, uh, and he needs to just kind of get Drogo all on the line. 
There you go, buddy. And again, the idea is here is when we're doing encounters, we want Drogo to come out. So if he starts getting used to following food, like treats like green beans that he has now, he loves sweet potatoes, of course he loves hibiscus leaves. If we can get him to start following Jay to come up like he's doing right now, that's exactly what we want with encounters. That way we can get him really close to people. And he is doing absolutely wonderful. I mean, this is great progress. And Jay is working really hard on the training on Drogo. As always, I offer Sunrise a pig, but oftentimes she doesn't strike at it. So look, this time she called me a liar. She was definitely ready to go. A lot of times with pigs, she doesn't like the scent as much, so I have to just lay it down, she crawls up. But today, uh, she wasn't messing around. As a matter of fact, if I wasn't on my guard, I think she would have bit me, so that is unusual, but I'm happy about that because I really like feeding her pigs, to be honest with you. Rabbits are a little harder for us to come by these days, so pigs are a little bit easier. So uh, it's good that she's starting to develop a taste for them. Then the last little critter we're gonna feed today, of course, is my guy, Snazzy, here. Come on, Snazzy. Come on, baby boy. Whoop, whoop. Come on. There you go, buddy. <laughs> All right, so that ends the feeding for the day. What do you say we head over to this crazy macabre death museum? I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. No idea what to do. Basically what happened was the owner came into the reptarium last week and was like, come visit us. You could do all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, let's go check it out. And we made it to the museum and listen, there's a hearse, the anatomy of death. I tell you what, this sounds like a great place to me. This is awesome. I, when I was younger, I wanted to buy a hearse to drive around and this is cool. So what do you say we go inside and check this place out? Cosmetic thing. Oh man, this place is creepy, man. I'm not gonna lie, it's super cool. Oh, look at two headed person. That's dope. I know this is a little bit of a departure from animals and stuff like that, but like I said, the owner of the place came in and, and he said, Hey, come check it out. And I like to experience weird things, right? So I think this is really, it's wow, these are all human bones, real human bones here. Again, human skulls, real deal. I mean, this is wild. I mean, Again, just something cool, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit dark, I get it, but, but at the same time, just to experience something like this is, is wild. You don't get to do this every single day. So I definitely feel very, very lucky that uh, they invited us in on the time when they were closed so that we could actually look around and it's see- It's so this, cool, this man. I'm, I'm like, I love this stuff, and not even for the dark reason. Right. I look at this as the mechanics of, of, yeah. of animals, and uh, it's cool to get to see how everything fits together and works, all the little joints that fit into yeah. sockets and stuff, so. It is wild. It's impressive. Definitely wild, you know, again, it's uh, it's nice just to sometimes get away. Yeah, you know, obviously, usually when I'm doing things, it's animal stuff, but uh, this is literally like 20 minutes from our place. Definitely, if you're ever coming to the Reptarium and you wanna see something like this, it's literally 20 minutes away. You can definitely come check it out. I'll put a link in the description of how to get to this place. Um, it's wild, you know. Yes, it's macabre, there's no doubt about it. There's a little bit of a sad vibe, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like this kind of darker energy. I don't normally like to surround myself with this kind of darkness, but uh, but to get away once in a while, and I know these guys are having a great time, it's, it's definitely really 
really cool, really something that you would never see anywhere. I mean, I couldn't imagine going to a museum like this and have some amazing artifacts. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, dude. Dude, what do you think, man? It's crazy. It is crazy. It's beautiful and weird. It's weird, right? But uh, it's crazy, a whole human, their personality and Everything every they memory were. they had. Everything. It was encapsulated in encapsulated. here. Encapsulated. Yeah. It's wild, man. That's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Seriously. So I guess what's crazy to me is like what we were just talking about, like with that one right there. It just feels so much smaller. Like yeah. Our well, heads now. A lot of these uh, skulls are really, really old. People were malnourished right. back then. They didn't have you know three, four meals a day. They didn't get the proteins and nutrients growing up like we did as children. So they were smaller people. Even in the U.S., you know things beds were smaller. Yeah. Doorways. People were just. Yeah, smaller smaller people back then. Yeah. Now, like, you know, we, we get all the food we need. And I mean, so look, at, look at Jay. Look I'm, at right Jay up there. I'm right behind you guys. <laughs> you want next so these guys are all just doing the human skull thing. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'll probably pass on this one just because I'm so sensitive to energies and stuff like that that um, I don't really want to pass any energy on to me. I already feel an unbelievable amount of energy in this room. So uh, I think I'll probably forego the actual touching part. But uh, it is definitely a great experience. Check this out, guys. Looking around, just all this crazy stuff and good, look what I found. Don't fear respect, actually That's Snake crazy. Bites TV. So someone actually had taken my shirt. They actually <laughs> did dye it like a tie dye put a couple rips in it and stuff like that, and uh, it's now here for sale. So that is pretty awesome. I mean, how cool is that? Like I said, guys, that was absolutely amazing. I mean, this place is cool. I'll put a link in the description if you're ever coming to the Reptarium. You want something else to do that's kind of creepy. It is awesome, super cool place. So uh, there it is, back to the shop. What an amazing day. We got to feed a bunch of snakes, and then we got to go do a really crazy macabre death museum. It was uh, pretty cool. I hope that you guys enjoyed and didn't get too freaked out by it. If you enjoyed this video and enjoyed feeding Videos. Here's a playlist you can hit and you can watch a bunch of feeding videos. Please hit one or two of those. It helps my click through rate. On this side, you can subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking It. Really do appreciate that. And over here, I hope that you're subscribed to this vlog channel. We're getting close to 3 million. Let's get there quickly. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.